Good morning, students. Welcome to our first live session of this unit, Network Design and Administration. You have watched my introduction video and about quite a number of things that we expected to do in this unit. Now, if you, if you look at the, the slide that I've displayed on the screen, my title is Introduction Networks and my subtitle is Advanced Networking Concepts. Why Advanced Networking Concepts? So this course makes an assumption that you have been introduced to the basic concepts of you have seen of how to suck. I'm aware that most of you have also gone through the CNA classes and CCNA being a networking course, I've introduced quite a number of things that happen within networks, technology that are used in networking. And uh, the primary objective of this unit is to make you gain the confidence of being able to design networks yourself and also to be able to troubleshoot networks when you're called upon to do so. Now, if I can go through a quick what do you know? I have a diagram here of simple peer-to-peer -peer network. And I believe that you know what peer to peer network is. I'm, I'm sure concept has been mentioned from time. We are just doing a recap of what you already know. But if I can explain to those who may have forgotten, a peer-to-peer -peer network is a network which you can design. Let's say it's, it, it can be just a simple network that you can create in the absence of a server. Let's give an example, like maybe in a cyber cafe. How many machines do you expect to have in a cyber cafe? Let's say like, like five in my diagram, or if there are more, maybe like 10 machines. Most of the time, if you go to a cyber cafe, you'll only find one, one attendant, or maybe two, but most of the time you'll find a single attendant. Or it's even possible to go to a cyber cafe and find that there are only five machines. In that kind of network, what you need is connectivity, especially connectivity to the internet, because of the visitors from there, they want to do one or two things on their profile. Probably they want to make an application. They want probably to maybe access a government service through the internet. And so what they need is just an internet connect and not necessarily those uh, services that are usually provided by, by some local area network, say like a corporate organization. So that is a simple peer-to-peer -peer network, a network where we have machines and uh, each is independent they are not controlled by a single staff and uh, the machines are able to exchange information. Now, if I mention something about the nature of the course, this course requires us to have uh, some practical activities. And uh, practical activities, activities in networking normally involve designing networks, being able to be in contact with the physical machines, cabling them and uh, trying to see how they connect and troubleshooting activity problems. Well, as I mentioned in my introduction video, that I will guide you practical practice that I'll be expecting to take in. I understand that it's going to be a little bit different. Easily the cables, the switches, the devices, and and you connect the machines physically. But still, it's going to be posed on your side because I'll be guiding you on what exactly you need to do. And I'm sure you're familiar with some of the technologies that I'm going to to mention that will help us have that environment of uh, machines which can network, exchange information, and you're going to achieve all the practical aspects of the unit. If you are having a challenge accessing this uh, particular site or this live session, maybe accessing a web browser, maybe Chrome, 
uh, from a mobile phone device, then uh, I think there is an application that you can also download from Play Store. So you go to Google Play Store and download the Moodle application. So the Moodle application will, will just function the same as a, a web URL. So I'm currently running this presentation from a laptop, so I'm using a web browser. But if you're using a, a mobile phone to access this lab, you can do the Moodle app from uh, Google Play Store, install it, and uh, it's just a simple procedure that is uh, very simple and direct. All you have to do is just enter your, your username as given by the, the school and your password information to log in. An application is going to pull your data and load it into its profile. And that way you'll be able to follow the lectures. Now, this is just a mini lecture that I'm giving. In uh, our mode of study, which I called blended learning, it is inclusive of uh, other, other resources. For example, uh, you notice that this presentation that I'm running, I have also uploaded it as part of lecture notes because you should be able to access the notes and uh, read them at your own pace. Now this is going to be a recorded lecture so in case you mention or uh, in case you want to review this session again then uh, I will post a recorded version of this session and you'll be able to review it uh, most of the time I'll be here next today so I think that's the earliest that it can appear. So if we have a session like today, I expect that uh, by the following day, we'll be able to have a recording of the session. And again, uh, this being a live session is uh, meant for guidance because other activities that will also be required to do, participation is important. I would also want to stress something about uh, class attendance that I will be checking on undertaking the class attendance because according to how the system is designed, class attendance is deemed to have taken place if you log in at a time when your specific class is taking place. Now back to our slides. I have a diagram of a network. And this is a network that you can have maybe at home in a small office or in any other place where you need maybe two, three, or less than five computers in a particular network. Now, in this type of network, I'm sure you have learned something about network topologies. So from this, you can easily tell that the type of topology that is used here, the physical topology, is uh, the bus topology, where your computer appears to make to single linear cable for the purpose of exchanging information. Now, in my next slide, I have an advanced network. And this network could be a corporate network, let's say like maybe a large insurance company, because the presentation, as you can see that we have like profiles, we also have some kind of segmentation in the network. So if you are familiar with the Cisco networking, eh, you may have learned something about subnetting. So from my data here, just subnet sub with this particular file, sub other, other servers, and you also have another network here. And it's a complex work where you also have on the site with a print server and other devices. Now, looking at a diagram like this, it's easily noticeable that this is a complex network. And network administrator you should have a network diagram of this particular network to know how the connectivity is uh, meant. So our unit is network with administration. So the expectation is that at some point, you'll be able to design networks and when you design the networks, you might not be the person who is going to manage that network. So therefore, as a part of the network design, you'll also be able to draw what is called a network diagram so that any other administrator who would come to that 
particular neck or even a new employee who will join the organization should be able to understand how the devices communicate so that if there's a connectivity problem like maybe a machine cannot access a particular or uh, there are two machines that cannot communicate the network admin should be able to troubleshoot those devices to determine whether it's uh, maybe a fault connectivity maybe a faulty cable and in what particular switch or uh, is it just a case of uh, firewall blocking communication and uh, the easiest place to start with is by looking at a network diagram knowing which which machines are in which network and whether they are able to communicate with the other network we have issues of uh, devices like default gateways these are machines or that forward remote networks in case the communication between the two networks is a remote connection okay now when you are designing networks the following elements will always be in mind now this is something that you are familiar with. those who are not familiar i will just uh, explain what they mean actually at the end of my slide will have a definition of terms and you should be able to understand what all these terms refer to now when you start nodes i believe that nodes are devices that are in the network most people will think of computers as devices in the network but we do have other devices that can also people can have switches we can have routers we can have modems and other devices that can also be part of the transmission so a node is not just computer a code is part of a node an example of a node but we have other devices that can also refer to us nodes in a network and cabling. When it comes to cabling, at some point we'll mention uh, the different types of cables that we can have in a network. So King adjust the medium, media that we use for the physical connection of devices. In this case, let's just call them wires. Topology is a term that we use to refer to the full layout of a network and uh, for example in my previous two slides there was uh, that simple peer-to-peer -peer network and that represented a particular topology which i referred to as the bus topology but we do have other topologies that you can mention i'm sure you've heard of mesh topology you've heard of ring topology topology hybrid topologies and so on what are data packets? Packet the of data transmitted from one machine to another. An example that I'll give is uh, when sending a message through the network. When you are sending a message through the network, you it could be a large message. Eh? Let's just say like you are just typing. Let's say that you're just typing something and uh, maybe it's an email. Uh, you do not expect that that email uh, is going to be transmitted as it is. It'd be a short email. But as short as it is, uh, networks have uh, let, networks have principles. Uh, that manage, let's call them protocols. Yeah? I'm sure I've heard of protocols. Next have protocols that govern transmission of, of data. Now, that message that you use is normally broken down into, is normally broken down into chunks, yeah? Chunks of information. And the purpose of this is to ensure that at least when there's a, a communication error, maybe like you are sending a, you are sending a document which can be broken down into maybe a thousand packets. It's a communication uh, maybe in the middle uh, of transmission. Uh, we do not expect the whole packet to be translated in full. It will have it will it will 
it into the resources, the bandwidth, it will slow down communication. Would want just that specific packet that had an error to be retransmitted. And that is one of the importance of having the message being broken down into, into charts. In the lectures, we are going to we'll, we'll go through the we'll go through the communication models. We normally have two major communication models that uh, address how devices communicate with each other on the network. The two most two major models are the OSI refer. model model to in, in topic which will how communication takes place and how data is uh, broken down into packets and at what particular layer or which specific layer is responsible for what active what particular activity when it comes to working addressing is also part of what we need to learn in this particular course and when we talk of addressing what should come to your mind be addressing an ip address is a unique number that is assigned to a machine on the network and it facilitates communication. It is not possible for a machine to be able to communicate on the network without an IP address. So addressing will also be a topic in this particular course, and we shall just review and see how to go about it. We shall talk about addressing later on, uh, the topics to follow, and uh, believe that after any that lesson, uh, it should be able to configure machines communicate in the same network or to even communicate with other machines in the remote networks. Communication software is also a very important part of this particular course. And communication software are software to communicate when machines communicate when machines talk to each other. Software facilitated communication, that type of software that is used for communication for communication is communication software. Of course, we have, this, we, we have other types of softwares like application software, system software, and, uh, and other examples. Data transmission rate. Data transmission rate could, say to, could simply refer to the speed within which communication is in a network. Can call it the bandwidth. When we are all facing internet, we always talk about interspeeds. We never, sometimes we say that maybe the internet is slow, it's fast. This is due to that, the data transmission rate. It, it, the devices that we use it also can also be factor as to our transmission speeds. For example, if you're using a solo device, you do not expect to have a faster communication within a network, especially maybe like if you are loading or downloading something from a network. But it is being sorted out by the technologies that we'll even mention in this particular course. For example, you are aware that we have 4G networks, we have 5G networks, and probably most of you are also, are also using devices to access. And those technologies uh, have got something to do with the speed and the data transmission rate. We have different uh, specifications the networks and also for wireless communication. Now, in my slides, I have a diagram of the network nodes with addresses. And like we said, nodes are devices that you find in a network. We do not want to call them computers because computers are just examples of devices, but today you'll find networks of even machines in industry. You will have networks of uh, devices, may not necessarily be computers. So any device that has the ability to communicate on the network is what you're going to call a network node. And I also mentioned that for a device or for a node to communicate on the network, it's an address. And an address is what you're going to call an IP address. Similar to our phone interaction, most of these concepts are normal. Like if you need to send a letter to someone uh, to know their their post address, that is the only way in which you can deliver that letter to that person. 
when it comes to computers, it's the same concept that when a device or when a computer is receiving a, a message, it needs to know who is coming from. And also when sending a message or a communication to another device, it needs to know the destination. And the destination address is what you're going to call the IP address. Of course, the IP is also used to with the other type of address that you're going to call the physical address, the hardware address. The most common is the MAC address. And uh, in simple terms, we can refer to these as uh, like the serial number of your phone, for instance. Uh, the serial number is a permanent number. The reason why the IP address and the and the physical address or the MAC address have to be combined, it's because we have technology where people share internet. For instance, in an organization, they can have just one server connected to the internet. And through the internet, all the other machines get the connection. Now the it comes with identifying the specific machine. Because if it's just one server that is connecting the internet, meaning that the IP address that is being seen is the public IP address of the server, but an organization could an organization could probably have like a hundred a hundred machines. And those machines are actively communicating through the internet, through the shared internet that is provided by the server. So in this case, apart from that public IP address, the machines themselves, so that can distinguish location which machine was sending what, and to ensure that the message is delivered to the correct machine, then we have these addresses like physical address, IP addresses, combined to form a destination or a source device. Now, Again, this topology is uh, a bus topology that I mentioned earlier on. We have some two subs. We have uh, two desktops on uh, one side. So another we have a print. And, uh, we also have this from the notes. I'm not able to read this from the presentation. We have a total of five machines. So we can say like, uh, these machines are representing networks. When you're doing a network diagram, maybe like a corporate network, and the organization has a hundred machines, you cannot draw a diagram of hundred machines. So we might we might have five that each of these machines is representing a particular subnet in that network. What are the capabilities of a network? And the cap capabilities of a network simply refers to the services that we can access from a network. Build a network. So if you are a network designer in an organization, you've been tasked with the, been tasked with the responsibility of uh, designing a network from scratch. I personally have found myself in a similar situation in one, in one of the organizations that I was working in. We migrated to building and the new building was being partitioned from scratch and there was a need to develop infrastructure from scratch. And in that particular environment, we had several departments that needed to be cemented. And uh, the first thing that we needed to do is to identify the services that will be required in that particular work. So now, these are just examples of the services we identified in our network. For example, our, our staff needed to communicate through email. We had an internal server that was called uh, Microsoft Exchange Server. Our staff also needed to access internet and also needed to have a place where they can, to have a device or a server that they would use for print services. And we'll also, they also required a file server where all the red files will be stored. So if I give you an example of that particular environment, we needed an email server, we need a, an internet server, we needed a storage server, which is usually called the file server, and also needed 
operating services. But from my slide here, we have a list of all the services or most of the services that would inform the design of your network. For example, are you designing the network with clients to be able to communicate through internal emails? Will they require storage services where they would store company files? Would they require to print? And if they require to, would you be buying printers for each office or would you buy one large printer that could be shared by all users in their environment? Do you require fax services? Fax services is the equivalent of photocopying, but in this case, it's a way in which you scan a document and uh, the copy is produced at a location. Modem services, you know what modems are. Host access, host, a host again is uh, similar to, it's, it's a term that is also interchangeable with the nodes. But in this case, when you talk of a host, most of the time we are referring to the client machines. So would you require these hosts to be accessing maybe server or the network? And what are the access controls that you are going to implement in that particular network? Now we have what is called the client server software. In this, this is just a type of network where there will be a server, the server, and other machines will act as client. A server will be sharing the resources and the client machines will be accessing the resources. Information network is just a network where it's a general term used to refer to a network where users can get information. So when you're doing your design, you need to have in mind what is the end game? What do you intend to achieve when that network is completely set up? Like now I have listed the services that probably to designing a network. So it could be designing a network for file sharing and sharing, or it's just for business commission. And uh, for this communication, we can think of things like interest, can think of extra nets where maybe like your suppliers could be logging into all and they are able to access controlled information. Are you designing a network for, for electronic communication? Do you require reporting? tools where you can summarize. For example, executives would want to log into an ERP software and produce a summary of uh, the activities that are being placed within their enterprise. You also have to figure out, do you need a big user in this or is it, is it a command line environment? Huh? An example of this is when you're designing application servers like database servers. Database admins sometimes would write queries or commands to be able to access specific information from the database servers. Or you could also have maybe a scenario where people are using some tools to be able to access data in a graphical user environment, which is usually the case in most of the organizations. We also have software that are used for business intelligence. And that's why my heading here is productivity gains from network because the reason why you create a network is to solve a business problem. So intuitive softwares, these are softwares that can uh, help you in business intelligence, maybe like prediction models. Assuming that you're a marketer, you're a sales manager of an organization, huh? the sales manager would want to do a prediction of, say like next month, the predicted volume in sales they be able to inform production uh, department to be able to get the increased demand or even scaling down production uh, and so on. So we have systems that can help you make a decision. We are calling intuitive software. Now, these are the key terms that have been mentioned in my slides. An address, like I said, is a unique number that we assign to a machine. So we are just going to call the office working and you know what an IP address is. So it's simply an address that a unique number that is assigned to a device on the network to be able to communicate with other devices. The devices could be printers. Now I have big printers that can be assigned IP addresses. We can have scanners, we can have computers, 
phones, uh, any other device that can be or is capable of being assigned and address, including a uh, wireless router. We refer to cables as the wires, the wires that facilitate a physical connection, but this is the only way in which you can connect network. So you can design a network which can be called a hybrid network where part of the devices are communicating through the cables and others are communicating through a wireless connection. So when it comes to cabling, as a network designer, you'll have to decide the appropriate type of cabling that is a pre for your network, depending on the devices, technologies that the organization has approved for use. A client, a client is simply a device that is accessing resources from a network, especially from a file server. So if your device, if you're accessing resources from a server, your machine is serving as a client. But again, in the network diagram that I displayed, a peer-to-peer -peer network, but we do not have a dedicated server. The machines or the client, okay, the machines in that particular network can as clients as well as servers, dealing with what particular activity is going on. If your machine is accessing a resource from another machine, your machine is acting as a client. But if other machines are also accessing your machine for specific maybe services, then your machine at that time is acting as a server. So in a peer-to-peer -peer network, machines act as both clients and servers depending with what activity is taking place in that particular machine. Client server, it's an architecture, it's an environment where we have dedicated server in a network where client machines remain as clients and server machines will remain us, the servers will be providing the shared resources and the client machines be accessing the shared resources. A data packet I mentioned is a unit of information that is sent from one network node to another and the example I gave was a document, an email document being transmitted over the network and uh, there is need to segment or to divide this particular message to break it down into smaller chunks of information. And those smaller chunks of information are what we are calling data packets. The reason for this is you want, when there's a communication error, just the specific packet did not arrive at the destination to be, trans to be retransmitted and then message. So other terms that we have also mentioned are file servers. Of a file server is just a server that is uh, used to host files for an organization. But we also have print servers. We have DHCP servers. Those are servers that provide IP addresses. We have D servers. Those are servers that provide uh, naming services. For example, when you type google.com, Google.com is a user-friendly name that is used to locate a server that has a particular IP address. It's not possible for, it's not easy for humans to remember numbers. And that's the reason why any machine that has an IP address is given a user-friendly name. So if you call a server in an organization file server, it's possible for everyone to access it using its name rather than remembering the IP address. A host, a host is simply a computer that a device that you'll find on the network, mostly the client machines could be referred to as the host. So from my definition here that it is a type of computer that has an operating system that allows several computers to access it at the same time. Now, IPX, Internetwork Packet Exchange. This is a protocol that is used in a particular type of network for exchanging information. I'm sure you're familiar or you have heard of the term TCPAP. So TCPAP is a, so a protocol that is used for the communication networks in the Windows environment, uh, Linux environment. But we also have other protocols like IPX, which is primarily used in novel to our networks. A local area network, commonly referred to as a LAN. A LAN is, uh, is a network, a network that is found within a building, mostly within a building or organization. Uh, an internal network found within an organization. It could be a floor or two floors in the same building. And uh, this is what we call the LAN. 
Now, if this network is going on across or beyond the building, across a major town or city, then that network can also be referred to as a area network. So we have the other terms, a network. A network is simply a communication system that enables many users to share computer resources. And the resources that you could be personal, computers, like you're sharing a one would want to access your, your machine remotely. Application software. In some cases, you would find uh, maybe some softwares running in particular machines. Maybe the reason for that could be that one machine is more powerful than the others. And therefore, if you need to install a particular software, maybe that's the only machine that can handle. But we'd want other users to also be able to access that software and use it. So they can connect to that machine remotely. And, in, and if they're doing that, one of the primary requirements is that a network has to be available for those two machines to communicate. Printers, faxes, and other examples that we've also mentioned in the previous slides. NIC, this is the network interface card, and this is just a card that is part of your computer, and it's what allows you to connect the connection media, the cables, wireless communication, in case it's a wireless network, your NIC or the network interface has a wireless device. Peer-to-peer, -peer, I've mentioned what it is, and a protocol. A protocol is a set of rules. Huh? From my definition here, it's an established guideline that determines how networked data are formatted into a packet and how they are transmitted and how they are interpreted at the receiving end. So a protocol is a rule, rules that transmit of data within a network. For example, if you are accessing a web page, the protocol that is going to be is called HTTP or HTTPS, protocol that manages how web pages are transmitted. If you are accessing, downloading or uploading a file, there's also a set of rules into how the upload and the download will take place. And in this case, there's a protocol called FTP can help you in that particular process. So we are going to mention a, a number of protocols in the later sessions and what specific use or usage that can be applied to those protocols. So this being uh, our first session, I want to thank you for your attendance. And uh, I believe that we're going to have many more of these live sessions. And uh, what is more important is actually the practical activities that be posting to you. Do something physically. If the unit is called a network design and administration, huh, you are not, you, you might read the notes and pass the exam. But what we are more focused on is the skill set. Are you able to be a reliable person? Can people call you when having a network challenges? And will you be able to troubleshoot those networks? Will you be able to solve the problem? Will you be able to design networks in the most appropriate way? Thanks once again for logging into this particular live session. And uh, this session is going to be recorded, so you can easily review it. But I've also shared the slides as a part of the lecture notes under topic one. Thank you.